if you finally got to meet Itsy Bitsy. I think what happened is when I vibrated the web, she thought she had caught a bug, so she stuck her head out, and then she got scared when she saw it was me. But she's a big old gray spider. I don't know what, um, what type she is, but I hope she doesn't ever bite me, and I hope she's not poisonous. But, um, Anyway, I'm on my way to meet a friend, and um, I'll tell y'all her story while I'm driving. But let me put on my lipstick. This was from my uh, friend in Indiana. Do y'all remember? She sent me two tubes of this uh, L'Oreal lip color, and I love it, Marsha. Thank you so much. So let me, let me put it on. It's just a beautiful rose color. I mean, for somebody to take the time to go to the store and, and purchase a gift for me and then to wrap it up and take it to the post office and pay all that money for postage. It's not cheap. I know that. And um, I just appreciate you so much. And I'm loving this lipstick. It's so moist. Anyway, Marcia is a nurse and uh, she lives in Indiana. I have a lot of respect for nurses. I know how hard y'all work with my daughter being a nurse. I know how hard she works. And, um, you know, the job entails a, a lot of, um, well, there's a, a truck coming up beside me, so I got to wait for him to pass. There we go. You know, being a nurse is hazardous because you've got, um, you have to protect yourself. You have to wear the gloves and, um, all the protective gear so you don't get bodily fluids in your eyes and, and a cut or something on your, your hands. So it's, it's very, it's a very dangerous job and a very difficult job. Um, nurses who work in the hospital you know, uh, they're 12 hour shifts from seven to seven, but that doesn't mean that you go in at seven and get off at seven. You go in around 6.30 because you have to um, go through the medication card and count the narcotics with the nurse that, the nurse supervisor or the nurse that you're relieving and all of that has to be documented. And, and then when you get off work at seven o'clock in the evening, you can't leave. You have to turn over your shift to the nurse that's coming in. So it's it's long hours, and it's difficult work. You have to you have to deal with doctors. You have to deal with other nurses. You have to deal with patients who are not on their best behavior because they're sick. They're in pain. They're irritable. You know they want this. They want that. They want it right now. And um. You know, you might have 15, 20 other patients you're taking care of. Maybe even more. I don't know. Um, then you have the families of the patients. So, you have the director of nursing. There's just so much. So, I just want you to know how proud I am of you, Marsha, and all of my other nurses that come over here and watch my videos every day. You're so sweet, and I love you. But what I was going to tell you about, oh, let me show you my pen first. This is from Jason from Mother's Day. And it has the amethyst birthstones in it. Y'all know all three of my children were born in February, eight days apart. <laughs> and in sequence, too. My first one was born February the 10th. My second one, February the 18th. And then my third one, February the 26th. So every weekend in February, we had a birthday party. <laughs> I miss those days. I, I loved it when my children were little. Although life was hard living with an alcoholic husband and him being out of work and, and drunk most of the time. But um, we managed, just like Itsy Bitsy does, every time we had our had our house or our lifestyle and our home and our source of income and source of food taken away from us. We always bounce back. Never once did my children go hungry. 
or go to bed hungry. And I'm thankful for that. And it's only because God was with me and um, He took care of, of me and my children. We never had luxurious items or anything like that, but we had a lot of love for each other. And we still do. <laughs> um, anyway, my friend Linda, um, now I met her when I was taking care of the elderly man. Um, he was 99 when I started caring for him. And he lived to be 102. Um, now Linda was the full-time caregiver. She worked four days a week, Monday through Thursday. And then I came in on Thursday night and um, I took care of Mark um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And um, it was a live-in position, but um, still, even though it was live-in, I guess it was more, you would have to say, a 24-hour caregiver position because, um, you know, even though Linda lived there Monday through Thursday, she had to go somewhere on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because I was there and I was sleeping in the bed <laughs> uh, that was uh, provided for the caregivers. But she was staying with her daughter at that time and um, now Linda is about I guess she's about 72 she's real sweet and I, I love her to death and I'm on my way right now to help her um, anyway Mark died when he was 102 but actually before that Linda Linda quit because she had a big um, blowout with the daughter and I eventually quit because of the blowout with the daughter over me buying the, the wrong brand of toilet paper. I paid like a dollar more for Charmin and I was supposed to get Scott and didn't do it. So she, she got real mad at me and I'd had enough of her crap, so I quit. But anyway, back to Linda, she, um, she stayed there. She was probably there at least two years before me and then another couple more years. Uh, while I was there taking care of Mark. Um, but anyway, she left and then she got another living job taking care of an elderly woman. And um, that was seven days a week, 24 seven. So she did have a place to live at that time. Now, she and her husband were married for nine and a half years. And, um, you know, they divorced many, many years ago. But still, when he died, she should have been entitled to a widow's pension. But the, um, the rule for Social Security is that you have to be married 10 years in order to qualify for your, your husband or your ex-husband's pension. So she missed out on her ex-husband's pension by not being married to him another six years. You know, she didn't know this. She was young. This was a long time ago when they got divorced and everything. Um, but I mean, even if your marriage ain't working out, you sure don't want to have to tough it out another six months. Cause you probably aren't thinking at that time that, oh, when, when I get old and retire, I'm gonna need his pension. No, you're young and you're thinking that you're gonna meet someone else and, and get married and, and have a good life. But that did not happen to her and neither did it happen to me. But. I was married to John for 19 years, so I, I do qualify for his um, widow's pension. It's not much because he, with his sporadic work history, he never paid in that much. So it's very, very small, <laughs> just big enough to disqualify me for benefits, but um, I don't qualify for them now anyway because of my income from YouTube. But that's in the past. I'm not going to dwell on that anymore. But I just wanted to bring it up for y'all who are facing, um, you know, that in your lives right now. If you have an ex-husband and you were married to him for 10 years or more, and, if you know, no matter how long y'all have been divorced, if you never remarried, but I think there is an age limit to that. I think it is... You would have to go to ssa.gov to see, but I think, I think you are entitled to marry after a certain age. 
and still qualify for your ex-husband's widow's pension. I, th I think I read that somewhere. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, you would have to go to that ssa.gov to if you're interested in that. So anyway, Linda, um, she only gets her Social Security, which is $600 a month. Well, y'all, there ain't nobody not here in New Jersey anyway that can afford a place to live and and um, pay your bills and buy medicine and buy food and survive on $600 a month. So anyway, she lost her job that she had taking care of that elderly woman. And um, so then her mother had a stroke, so she moved into her mother's house taking care of her mother. And she thought she was on her mother's will. Um, I don't know why she thought that, because she was always treated like the black sheep of the family. And um, her brother was given land to build his house on, uh, part of the land that her mother's house is on. So, um, and then her brother's two sons were given a plot of land. And her mother, Linda's mother, bought her a TV. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's not anything nearby equal to a plot of land to build your house on. So here, Linda is, um, her brother has passed away, so her brother wasn't around to take care of her mother, and I doubt he would have anyway. So Linda took care of her mother for about a year. So she lived there, and um, so her mother died um, about, I think November will be a year. So anyway, she, uh, Linda and her brother's two sons, they all go to the reading of the will, Linda's mother left the house to the two um, grandsons. Linda did not get a dime from her mother's estate. So she's she's just, you know, beside herself. She's been living now with um, a friend of hers, you know, who gave her a home um, uh, or a room in her home. And it's just been horrible, y'all, because she just doesn't, um, you know, she doesn't have money. She doesn't have a job. So anyway, um, Linda did get a job. And she starts it on Sunday, which is tomorrow. But it's about um, 30 miles south of where she's living right now. And y'all, her car is on empty, so she can't even get to her job. So she texted me last night. She said, Glenda, can I borrow a couple of bucks from you? She said, you know, um, she has to be at that job at seven o'clock in the morning and she doesn't even have gas to get to it. So I said, sure, you know, I'll, um, let's go to lunch together today and we'll take your car and fill it up with gas. That's the least I can do for a very good friend of mine. So that's where I'm headed now. Um, I won't be making a video of us having lunch together because um, Linda doesn't want to be on YouTube. But y'all, that's what I'm telling you about. You better save your money. You know, you, um, you who watch me, who are young and, and have a job and are making... Even if you aren't making decent money, if, if you can uh, still manage to sock a little bit away every week out of your paycheck, it does add up. And if you put it in a, in a CD or a good interest-bearing account, you will have a nest egg when you retire. I do not want you to end up like me and like Linda. So that's just a little more, another story from my life and a little more advice. I love you. Y'all please hit that thumbs up button and share my videos. And I just appreciate you listening to my life stories. And y'all just keep on coming back. Bye, guys.